How do you do? My name is Lane Raspberry. I'm user Blue Raspberry and Wikimedia Projects. I'm standing as a candidate in the 2024 election for Wikimedia Foundation trustee. As part of that election, people have sent in questions. There's a link in the description to the list of those questions. I'm going to be answering those. And I've also got some additional questions that I'll be answering first so that you can know my positions and, and policies as a potential trustee. Question one, what do you think about the use of Wikipedia for political purposes, including the use of banners and changing the site's logo to a political logo? If you're elected, will you act to change the regulations so that there is no permission to do so? This is from Hane. Thanks for sending in the question. So the general situation is that the wiki community of editors is empowered to change the logos uh, on, that appear on the website, the, the Wikipedia logo. This is an extraordinary type of permission. The users of YouTube and Instagram and other social media platforms are not empowered to change the site's logo. And I really respect the democracy. I like to have power in the hands of the community of users. And I think that we should respect that Wikipedia permits this when other platforms and other media entities would never give this kind of power to its user community. So in answer to the question, no, I do not want to take this permission away from the community. That said, what's being discussed here is the changing of the Wikipedia logo in the context of the Gaza war. So if the community members had had a democratic discussion and there was global consensus to do this and it was an accepted use, I would support the community doing anything democratically. But the problem in this case is that we don't have good democratic infrastructure. I, there was no conversation that took place on a global level. We don't have policy for this. I want stronger community democracy. That's what I'm advocating for. And I will not advocate that more power be taken from the community and get centralized into the Wikimedia Foundation. So I don't think it was the right decision to change the logo in this case. But at the same time, I think that people would be sorry if we made Wikipedia less democratic and took more power away from the community. So think, think twice about how you would want to regulate this. Uh, centralization of power, I do not believe, is the way. Next question. Can you explain to us what your vision is for the movement, particularly regarding user groups that prom promote minority languages? This is from Shei uh, Gulu. So the situation is that the majority of the money that comes into Wikipedia, they tend, it tends to go to groups that already have power and great accomplishments. But Wikipedia seeks to provide general reference information in every language in the world. Many thousands of languages are possible. Wikipedia does a good job of representing hundreds of these. But the money that comes in by no donations, it tends not to go to minority languages. What I would like is to change the rules so that there's different rules for different sizes of groups. I feel like minority languages have a hard time accessing grants because of the reporting requ requirements, the application requirements, and also that there's standardization in what's expected if somebody receives money that doesn't apply to many minority groups. Just to throw an idea out, I wish that if a group anywhere in the world met some minimal uh, validity requirements, they had a community, they had discussion processes in place, the, the language community showed some, some signs of community organization and activity that they could get very easily something like $2,000 US per year to demonstrate that they can organize meetups, provide coffee and tea for people and do something. And if a group uh, does a good job reporting that $2,000, then they could get easier access to $5,000 and go up in their funding. Uh, right now, there's too many groups that don't even apply for money that I think would qualify. And I regret that we're losing the momentum uh, of these groups and the, the volunteers who contribute content in these languages for lack of access to money. In general, I think money, uh, a small amounts of money sent to local communities to manage themselves. I think that's the way forward for a, a lot of challenges. <clears throat> Next question. This came to me privately by email. You've discussed a desire to ex expand grant funding for more projects by Wikimedians. I was wondering how you plan on making this a reality and what metric would count as success for the policy. I'm just apprehensive on what the actual goalpost is for this mission. So I'm standing as election for trustee. That doesn't mean I have exec I would have elect executive power if elected. It means that I would be talking with the director of the Wikimedia Foundation and helping to set strategic priorities with other people on the board. 
this is uh, having me elected doesn't mean that I could send money to to anyone in particular. It's not supposed to be that way. But just as a strategic priority, uh, as I said with the minority languages, I'd like for groups to have more more access to money. I would like more democracy in the Wikimedia movement and for the Wikimedia Foundation to fund community empowerment and generally divest power from itself so that the community can make more decisions, uh, organize more partnerships, and recruit more volunteers to contribute the content that's important to them. So what metric would count as a success for this policy? The, the biggest thing that I can recommend that I think is actionable, especially as a start, is more budget transparency and accountability. If a typical Wiki community member wanted to look at the donations coming into the Wikimedia movement or how the Wikimedia Foundation spent this money, they would have a lot of trouble interpreting the budgets. And uh, although there's financial compliance, that, that happens, that's just required by law. I, I think the budget needs to be divided in dozens of other ways, depending on special interest. So the wiki community needs to know how much money is going to uh, minority languages, how much money is going to the sciences, to sports, to pop culture, how much money is going to large groups, small groups. We need a lot more financial accountability and transparency so that the wiki community can understand where the money's being spent and be more thoughtful in how re resource allocation should happen. For lack of this money, I think that a lot of conversation and debate is is wasted. The energy is is not being spent effectively because people don't know where the money's going or, or how much money we have or can't divide it among among ourselves and there's too much infighting because too much fighting over resources and we don't know how it's being spent. So budget transparency, that's that's the thing that I think that I can recommend the most as a, as a board member. And I can facilitate this. I'm a Wikimedia at a university. I've got a lot of accounting students. I think by making the budget transparent and sending it to students, you don't even need to rely on the Wikimedia Foundation to come up with these kinds of custom budgets for particular needs. I think these could be student projects or crowdsourced in many cases. Uh, okay, this is now I'm moving on to the questions from the, the list that's linked. Uh, what would you hope to achieve such that a year or two later you'll consider your work as a board member a success? This is from Leaderboard. The, the budget accountability, I, th I think that's the thing. So we're talking about a couple of hundred million dollars US. The Wiki community has a lot of questions about how this money's spent, where, where it's being spent. And if we could tell stories about where slices of the budget goes and what impact that has, I think that would be the most motivating thing for community organizers to act upon, and it would greatly increase trust in the Wiki movement. Next question, how do you tend to carry along all Wikipedians by ensuring inclusivity and employment opportunities? Uh, 7871YO. I, I don't know. But the Wikimedia Foundation right now, when it gives grants to Wikimedia community groups, it asks them to report the demographic information of the people who participate in those groups and who participate in events. So, for example, if there's a, Wiki, there's a Wiki community organization in New York City, and the Wikimedia Foundation asks that group to report how diversity metrics, what kind of people show up to the events, who's getting access to the, the cookies and coffee, that are at the sponsored events, what kinds of articles are they editing, heavy demographic reporting for everything with volunteers. And if we're talking about how do we ensure uh, diverse employment opportunities for what the Wikimedia Foundation is doing, I would like to see the same kinds of diversity metrics in the staff hiring of the Wikimedia Foundation. I've got the sense that, for example, the, the majority of the, the C-level staff of the Wikimedia Foundation have either been American citizens or living in America, close ties to America. I don't think the diversity in the Wikimedia Foundation, especially at the senior level, matches the encouragement that and pressure that the Wikimedia Foundation puts on community of volunteers to do diversity. And I'd just like to see more transparency uh, to the extent that it's legal, to the extent that you can report these kind of things, conversations about what kind of people are being hired at the Wikimedia Foundation. <clears throat> Next question, Wikimedia Foundation fundraising has grown a lot over the past 10 years. Uh, in your opinion, should our fundraising campaign slim down? Could you name a program or venture from the last year that did not work out as expected? This is from Sony. 
No, I do not think that the Wikimedia Foundation fundraising should slow down. However, I want more budget transparency, and I think we should have conversations about the success of the Wikimedia Foundation and Wikipedia platform as a, a, a fundraising machine. If we're bringing in a lot more money, and it's more money than Wikipedia needs, I think that we should look to our partners and look to other projects, which will never be able to accomplish successful fundraising. And I think we should think about giving some of the money that we raise to supplement their own fundraising programs. Because from the perspective of readers, I don't think they distinguish Wikipedia from our partners and the places where we get information. Some of the partners that I'm thinking of are OpenStreetMap, which is a free and open map. So when you need location data in Wikipedia, Apple doesn't give it to us. Google doesn't give it to us. Those are commercial entities. We have to get our mapping data from a nonprofit project. And it comes from a, a project called OpenStreetMap, which gets very little money. Few people donate it to it. And yet it appears in hundreds of thousands of Wikipedia articles and supports location data in many languages. So if Wikipedia is successful in fundraising, I think we should send money to partners like that. I could, I could also mention Internet Archive, who ensures that the links to the citations, to the sources that we use for fact checking in Wikipedia, they ensure those links don't rot, they archive those. And I think that we could better partner with those, that organization as well. We should send more money to minority languages. We're not short of things to do. What I do regret and what I don't want to happen is more growing the bureaucracy in the Wikimedia Foundation as a central power. I do not think that should be our strategy. I don't think that should be part of our, our central plan. But I do think that we should uh, take in money and send it out in many directions. What's a program that did not work out as expected? The, the Knowledge Equity Fund was, was controversial in the Wiki community. This was a Wikimedia Foundation effort to fund non-Wiki community organizations to contribute to Wikimedia projects. And the reason why this wasn't successful was there was no Wikipedia community input or insufficient Wiki community input on the design of the program. The partners who received the grants did not seem to contribute to Wikimedia projects. It seemed like they were given money in hopes that they would come to Wikimedia projects and that didn't actually happen. And also they, they didn't do conventional grant reporting in the way that the Wikimedia community expects. So what would have prevented this? Uh, more democratic oversight from the Wiki community, more transparency, sticking to our values. Uh, that's why it didn't happen. And there are projects that the Wiki community would, would like to see funded. I think OpenStreetMaps and Internet Archive are included in those. Next question, there's been some trend towards devolving or sharing the governance of the movement, including ha having a separate endowment board and the proposed Global Council and Movement Charter. What do you see as the positives and negatives of, the, negatives of this? And uh, what's your overall assessment of the work so far? The major negative that I see, and this is this goes really deep, this goes back 20 plus years, is that I disagree in, the, in, in this movement separation and the Wikimedia Foundation funding different entities to take over certain responsibilities. Part of the, the, the fundamental planning of the Wikimedia Foundation is anticipating that the user community, the editors of Wikipedia, the people who write the content and take the photos and do the fact checking and maintain the encyclopedia, the users of the platform for this user generated content, that they would be separate and distinct from the Wikimedia Foundation, with the Wikimedia Foundation staff being professionals and hired to do a job that has to do with running an organization, a corporation, a nonprofit entity. But these people are not Wikipedians. They, they don't share the values of the movement. Uh, they're, they're not active in Wikipedia when they get hired. And because we have this organization with all the money, the Wikimedia Foundation, but their staff do not share our values, share our beliefs. They, they have different ethics or, or just don't understand our ethics or what our culture is about. And yet they have oversight in, in so many different ways of the user community, deciding which projects to fund, how to fund them, deciding the what the success metrics are, and often not able to have conversations with Wiki community members because it's different cultures. There's, there's so much misunderstanding. So as we're the Wikimedia Foundation is engaged in these, these processes of power divestment, they still carry the fundamental principle, this, this guiding strategic principle that there's the Wikimedia Foundation and there's the community of volunteers. They have different values, different cultures, and they don't need to overlap. So the, the big negative about this divestment, I don't like 
I don't like furthering the idea that there should be more separation between the Wikimedia Foundation and community. What do I like about the divestment of power? Well, I, believe me, I, I really like the idea of divestment of power. I just want it to be aligned on values. There's so many things that the Wikimedia Foundation will never have the staff capacity to do that could be crowdsourced. Things like partnerships, local partnerships. So there's very enthusiastic Wikipedians around the world who can organize partnerships without the exchange of money, but content partnerships, editing partnerships with universities, museums, libraries, cultural institutions of all kinds. Wikipedia is based on crowdsourcing. That's one of our values. And the volunteers are very good at organizing crowdsourced relationships where you'll have university students edit Wikipedia related to their class in some country around the world, and we'd never be able to get this kind of content otherwise. Staff of the Wikimedia Foundation, in the past 20 years, they've never been able to accomplish this. They're, they're never going to be able to accomplish this. There's just too much cult cultural, cultural gulf between the two. And I'd like to have more conversations about the, the fundamentals of, of governance, where why do we need to separate the Wikimedia Foundation and, and community so much? I'd like to question that and talk, talk more about it publicly. Next question. Over the last 10 years, Wikimedians have been focused on the carbon footprint of travel. What steps do you see the Wiki, that the Wikimedia Foundation Board can take right now to ensure the movement is operating as a sustainable and ethical source of knowledge? Uh, Nangara. There's a group in the Wikimedia movement called Wikimedians for Sustainable Development, and for many years they've asked for data about Wikimedia Foundation employee flights. I think we should publish flight data. The community wants to know. There's no reason why the Wikimedia Foundation shouldn't publish this. It's a matter of public interest. We, we just want to know what, what flights are being paid and what the carbon footprint is. If the community is asking for this, uh, they, they need this information. It should not be kept secret. I'd like to give them that report. Next question. With the divergence of Wikimedia foundation employees away from so-called first world countries with developed employment rights to employing in lower economic countries, what practical steps do you see the board implementing to ensure equality of employment conditions and opportunities? To ensure, I, I don't think it's the board's place to ensure equality of employment conditions and opportunities. Uh, I'll just give a personal opinion and look at me. I'm the only, the only potential trustee of any tech organization in the world which is ever going to say this, but I really think the Wikimedia Foundation employees should start a labor union. If they started a labor union, then I would have more respect for employees as a community. I would trust that they're organizing and having conversations for themselves, speaking for themselves about their, their own rights and conditions. I don't think it's the responsibility of the, the board to suggest rights to employees. I think it's employees' uh, duty to have conversations with themselves and especially because these are our, our tech employees. The Wikimedia Foundation employees are, are professionals. They're educated. They know how to form a labor union. And I think also if they were to form a labor union, then the wiki community would be able to more easily talk to them about social and ethical issues. I don't want the Wikimedia Foundation senior leadership telling employees to do something that might be ethically questionable, and then the employees just doing it because they're following their orders. I want them to, to think for themselves. So if they had a union, they would be able to assert their own rights. They would be able to have conversations in, in public about big tech ethical issues that every, every kind of technology company, including Wikipedia, is having to think about. And they should be able to speak for themselves as a union, labor unions away. What are your thoughts about systemic bias on Wikimedia Foundation projects, both in their content and demographics, and including identity-based, language-based, economic and resource-based, and other forms of bias? This is from Procopterus. <clears throat> okay, l lis li listen to me. Wik Wikipedia is biased. It's good to talk about bias. There's many academic papers, many journalists who have written about the bias of Wikipedia. I recognize that it's, it's a very serious problem. At the same time, this question, it, it frames the issue negatively, and there's plenty of room for critical discussion but I don't think the negativity is productive, and I think people should look to the positives of Wikipedia. So people say some, some things like, in Wikipedia projects, women are underrepresented, for example, or LGBT people are underrepresented, or minority demographics are underrepresented. And that's true. 
it's definitely true and you should you should talk about that and we should do things to correct it but at the same time I think that Wikipedia does the best job of any platform or organization in the world in representing these minority groups. If you were to compare Wikipedia's representation of women to any university, any other media company, any other online platform, I think Wikipedia's uh, safer. I think it better profiles underrepresented demographics. I think it has more conversations in public about what to do to make things better. I think it gives more governance powers to minority groups to organize and for all minority groups, women and LGBT and people in underrepresented countries and language communities, people with uh, differing levels of uh, ability uh, to talk with each other and say, what could make things better and let's get even better. If people were to organize in a university, I don't think that researchers and students would get so much respect from university leadership as what you can have in the, the, the democracy of the Wikimedia platform. If they, the people who make user-generated content and say YouTube or Instagram were talking about disparities, the disparities are vast. Those platforms will not give you the data that demonstrate those disparities. You can have that data in, in, in Wikimedia projects and certainly will not encourage the, the user community to organize. If the user community did organize, the leadership's not going to listen to them. Focus on the positives of what Wikipedia offers. And instead of coming to Wikipedia saying there's big problems and it's a terrible wound and we, we can't fix these things, say, here's where we are relative to the landscape. We've got all these strengths. Let's leverage our strengths and let's do the best we can and also celebrate the successes we've had. I think that Wikipedia has been tremendously successful in representing minority and underserved communities around the world. Next question, the Wikimedia Foundation is a large organization with 600 plus employees and a budget of almost 200 million. What professional experience do you have with managing employees and budgets? Uh, thanks for the question. I do not have experience managing an organization of this, this size. I'm a researcher at a university. I'm a principal investigator. I manage research students and collaborate with my colleagues, uh, other, other uh, I call it other researchers, faculty at the university. I, I do these kinds of research projects managing my own grants. So I've collaborated with a lot of boards. I've served on a lot of boards that have dealt with bigger budgets, pr particularly in the pharmaceutical industry. But my slice of the budget, it's it's never been anywhere near $200 million. The most I've ever managed in a year is about a million dollars uh, for research. Working on a board of trustees, next question, requires collaborating with other board members, persuading them to support your vision, uncollegial behavior, such as inappropriate criticism, it's bad. If you join the board, do you think you'll be able to work effectively with other people on the board? Uh, thanks for the question. Yes, I've been on boards my entire life. I, I'm i not a person who finds themselves in a lot of conflict. On, on the Wikimedia platform, um, sometimes tempers get high. I don't think that these kinds of things really play out uh, away from away from online spaces, they're a lot cooler. And on the board of the Wikimedia Foundation, there's always been people from diverse backgrounds. And as I understand, things things typically work out very well. Uh, I'm organized some community organizations that sometimes have conflict. Uh, my solution to conflict is keeping a mediator, professional mediator, on call. These are contractors, people that you can give money to when there's something that needs to be debated in a particular time period to help people come to a decision. And at the budget that the Wiga Media Foundation has, 200 plus million dollars a year, keeping a, a mediator on call would be wise. I don't expect that it's going to be so needed, but that is one way that you can you can prevent uh, these kinds of conflicts. Also, I, I support transparency and, and open conversation. I, I post to social media. I think I'm a more open and transparent person than is typical. I wish that every person on the board of the Wikimedia Foundation would, would post often to social media, but being being transparent and having conversations with, with more people about your beliefs and what you're doing, I think that also prevents conflict. Uh, board members at all tax-exempt nonprofit organizations are legally required to support the Wikimedia Foundation's charitable purpose. Uh, if you join the board, do you think you will be able to effectively fulfill your duty to serve the mission or will other competing interests, such as serving people and groups who are support who supported your election, will that sometimes be more important to you? 
It's extremely unusual for an organization like the Wikimedia Foundation to host an election to select its trustees. So if you look at Google's governance on, on their board, there's not representation from people who use Google search. Apple's board, it's not, doesn't have representation from, from people who own Apple devices like regular consumers. Uh, on YouTube's board, you don't get to be a popular YouTuber and then you get to serve on the board and, and manage the direction of the organization. And, and Wikipedia, fundamentally, this was decided many years ago that there would be user representation on the board. Half of the board members are elected by the user community of Wikipedia. And this it, itself is a, a check on governance and accountability. This is not a problem. This is the way it's designed and it's a good thing. I think being accountable to voters is the Wikimedia Foundation strategy for accountability. And we know that this is how, how the board wants it to be because the board could get rid of elections if they want to. For as long as there's elections, voter accountability to voters is our strategy for ensuring that, that the people on the board conform to the mission. Next question. Disinformation has been a major theme running through political and economic discourse over the last decade, even in scientific discourse. Wikipedia has adopted some new policies to maintain the integrity of our content. How well do you think that's worked? This is coming from Small Bones. Everyone asks about the quality of Wikipedia. This question and debate, I'm in the wiki community, and I feel like we answered these questions very well 20 years ago. Uh, I, I started editing in Wikipedia in, in 2004. It's 2024 now. I, I, I started editing Wikipedia almost every day since since 2008. And in, the, in that time period, there were so many people criticizing Wikipedia, saying anyone can edit. It's low quality. You should, you should go to the better competitor. Go to the other encyclopedia that's so uh, available online and it's so fact-checked and it's so much better than Wikipedia. Why would you use Wikipedia? Well, guess what? There, there is no legitimate competitor to Wikipedia. It's the place where you get general reference information. Wikipedia's got a billion annual readers. This is what the Wikimedia Foundation claims. It's a global institution. It's what we have. And I don't think that the critiques on Wikipedia's misinformation are valid, especially compared to other social media platforms. I think that so much more information spreads through other, other social media platforms that, that do not endure the criticism that Wikipedia gets. And I think that's unfair. I think people should be complaining about the misinformation elsewhere. Wikipedia's got good, good quality control processes. That said, <clears throat> I'm in favor of more, more research, especially at the university level, critiquing subsets of Wikipedia's articles, like let's go through the chemistry articles, let's go through the economic articles, just pick a subsection of them and have university teams critique and grade the quality of 100,000 articles at a time using new te techniques in machine learning or artificial intelligence with some human grading as well. Uh, it's never been cheaper to do quality control in Wikipedia. We should do more of it, but I'm, I'm not going to apologize for Wikipedia's quality because I think it's so good, especially in compare, comparison to other sources. There is no other encyclopedia that, that's free and online with the, the breadth of coverage that Wikipedia has or the transparent quality control. It, it works very well on Wikipedia, and I, I think that's been a settled matter for, for more than 20 years. Next question, the creation and implementation of a universal code of conduct has been a board priority since 2020. The original timeline for the implementation of the universal code of conduct was unrealistic. The universal code of conduct was implemented by the board without community ratification. What lessons should the board take from the process uh, especially about how the board interacts with volunteers. Anti-composite number sent that question. We have a confusing and chaotic democratic process in Wikipedia. There often comes to be issues like this one. Should, we ad should the wiki community of editors, the user community, should they adopt a particular code of conduct? I think that, so here's some social context behind this. I think that the majority of the, the Wikimedia community wanted a code of conduct and was ready to adopt one. There was some deb debate about whether this particular code of conduct or, or this manifestation of it was the one that, that we should adopt. But we want civility. We want people to be polite to each other. We want enforcement if someone's acting out of line or engaged in misconduct. And it's hard to organize democratic conversation. It has to be multilingual. There's many different special special interest groups like 
LGBT people are aware of particular harassment against LGBT people and, and want protections. They look at a code of conduct in, in that lens and need to see that they'll be protected. Anyway, what, what happened in the wiki community, and I, I wish we wouldn't repeat this, is that we had multiple elections for different aspects of the code of conduct, but there wasn't actually an election for ratif ratifying the whole conduct as a, as a full package. And then the Wikimedia Foundation board, irrespective of elections, without without democratic voting community approval, adopted the code of conduct that we have. So it didn't actually go through a ratification process. I favor ratification process. I favor democracy. What I would want to strengthen this in the future is an independent election committee in the Wikimedia movement. Right now we do have an election committee. That's fairly new. It's only a few years old. It's not very strong. It doesn't have any funding. It, in my opinion, it's it's under heavy pressure by staff of the Wikimedia Foundation and wouldn't be able to speak out on its own. I would like the election committee to be strongly independent, strongly funded, have some budget to do research that they need to do to ensure democracy, fund their, fund their own translations without having to ask the Wikimedia Foundation for them, and be able to participate in other kinds of conversations and meetings, which are, are difficult to do without a budget. They, democracy legitimately needs a budget in the Wikimedia movement. Uh, if we had a strong committee, if we grew it for years, if they promoted democracy, if we said this is our shared value and we're committed to this, then so many of these problems that I've discussed in the, in this video, they would not come to pass because Wiki community members would have good discussion process. When discussion fails, we can we can vote on something to settle it, and then people would have overall trust in the process. There's a, a lot of mistrust right now. Next question, should board candidates respond to all questions posed by community members during the election process? It's a challenge. It, it's a heavy investment to, to respond to, to these kinds of questions. I'm more comfortable in in video than, than other candidates. For candidates who want to type these things out, it, it can take hours per question. I, I don't fault anyone who doesn't answer all the questions. That said, I've, I've, got a, I've got a video channel. I've got other videos. You can look at me answering questions from previous years, even when I wasn't running. I'm comfortable talking online, but if, if someone's not comfortable talking by video or by text, I, I don't hold it against them. What should the Wikimedia Foundation do to improve trust in Wikipedia within the United States? This is from Tony Metz. The general situation is that editors, community organizers, user contributors in the United States through different surveys have said that they don't trust the Wikimedia Foundation. I think there's also mistrust in other countries, but at least in the United States, people are privileged. They have money. They have some leisure time. They have computers and, and phones that are uh, good internet connections, ways ways to talk back. I think if we did surveys in lower and middle income countries, people would also voice their, their dissatisfaction. I think there's also some expectation that if a group complains about the Wikimedia Foundation, then they'll get their funding cut off. So you'll find wealthier people like those in the United States are more able to complain, whereas other people, they'll stay silent because even while they're they're trying to complain, they're also trying to get funding and resources in different ways from the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, more mistrust. I want more democracy, more ability for the community to, to speak freely. I think the Wikimedia Foundation is afraid to ask the community for feedback, and I think the user community of contributors are afraid to give feedback to the Wikimedia Foundation. Reading the annual plan for 2024 and 2025, I note the statement, Wikimedia content is becoming less visible as part of the internet's essential infrastructure because of an increasingly closed and AI mediated internet that doesn't contribute to the, uh, it doesn't attribute the source of the facts or even link back to Wikipedia. The situation here is that if you go to a virtual assistant, you ask an AI a question, all AIs have slurped in the entirety of Wikipedia. And when, when you ask questions, AI, AI, virtual assistants, they'll give you an answer based on what's in Wikipedia, but they don't give attribution to Wikipedia. What should we do about this? I don't think that it's the place of the Wikimedia Foundation to organize this conversation because this is a global, multicultural, multinational conversation. It affects everyone on earth. It's way too big for Wikipedia. And instead, I think that we should partner with policy institutes around the world, university departments of public policy, 
and try to crowdsource the conversation to this and ask the world's experts and people around the world to give advice to the Wikimedia Foundation about what we should do. The Wikimedia Foundation employs a few hundred people. Uh, a few of these people are public policy experts. And even with those people working as hard as they can, I don't think they're going to solve the issue of what do we do with AI and ethics in society. We really need crowdsourcing on this. I think it's unfortunate that the Wikimedia Foundation right now, because of this, this gulf between community and the foundation, has not been able to ever have strong university partnerships. There's no such thing as a, a university research ecosystem that advises the Wikimedia Foundation or Wikimedia movement. It's very haphazard and disorganized. And for Wikipedia to be successful about this AI issue and a great many other technological issues, we need, we need partnerships with more experts around the world. Next question, how will the Wikimedia Foundation ensure admin, function, admin and functionary accountability and address abuses of power per the Universal Code of Conduct? There's a, a lot of con context for this. I'm going to say the same thing that I've, I've said to so many of these different questions. I don't think it should be the Wikimedia Foundation taking power away from the community to start educating, passing judgment on these kinds of situations. Instead, I want the Wikimedia Foundation to provide the funding for the Wiki community to govern its own democratic processes. Democracy and crowdsourcing is the way. And right now, the Wiki community is not resourced to solve these kinds of things. The Wikimedia Foundation does not encourage or empower the community to solve these things with money or without. Next question, do you support a global council according to the Wikimedia movement charter draft? This is from Dennis Barthel. Yes, but the issue is that everyone who reads the movement charter, the, mo the movement charter is a proposed document that assigns governmental power to different entities in the Wikimedia movement. Uh, among other things, it says, here's what the Wikimedia Foundation is. Here's what the Wiki community is. We'll give these powers to this one and these powers to this one, and we're going to divide resources in this way. We we drafted these this, this charter uh, over the past couple of years, and before that, we had many, many discussions around the world, spent tens of millions of dollars on a strategic process every year forever to try to come up with a document to de define these these roles. And it happened that the Wiki community supported the adoption of this charter. The Wikimedia Foundation board re rejected it. I support divestment of power. I oppose centralization of power in the Wikimedia Foundation and want the community and democratic process to have more power. According to the movement charter draft, the problem is that if two people read the movement charter draft, they're going to interpret it in two different ways. I'll even say that it's not possible for anyone to objectively review the movement charter draft and interpret what it's going to mean and how it plays out. And that's because these things are intermingled with social networks. They hang on translations of individual words. It requires conversation and, and culture and trust. And you cannot take a text document and drop it into an online community like Wikipedia and expect everyone in the world to read this text document and understand it in the same way. As a fundamental principle, I, I think we need to define roles and responsibilities and have separation of power between the Wiki Foundation and Wikimedia community. Personally, after spending hundreds of hours having conversations with people in person and by video chat, with people who drafted the charter. I've, I've contributed lots of comments to the charter myself and being engaged in the development of this process. I trust that it's an improvement over what we have. But when someone asks a question like this, I have no idea how they're interpreting the movement charter or the, the global council. And I'll just say also, I don't think anyone in the Wikimedia Foundation understood what the drafters of the global charter the, the, the drafters of the movement charter meant when they were talking about the Global Council. It, it's complete misunderstanding everywhere. Next question. Do you believe that the Wikimedia movement's primary focus should be on the work happening directly on the projects or the values that the projects represent and why? Giraffer. Briefly, I'll say that I think the Wikimedia Foundation should report impact and outcome metrics everywhere. 
and that it's we, we can't just hold to our values and say this is what we believe but we're we're, we're going to stick to our values but we're going to disregard what the what the real world outcomes are i think that we need better data about where wiki wiki content's being developed where we've had problems for for many years and we're not seeing solutions or, or, have we dropped in money to underrepresented groups for many years trying to solve different problems and we're not getting success from these kind of things i don't know because we don't have sufficient community satisfaction surveys i don't think we have enough university level academic level research on the health of the health of the community the development of the kind of content that we have it's hard to to push a button or look at any tool to get the kind of data we need to know which language versions of Wikipedia are developing content, which are not developing content, and what academic subject areas or sociological subject areas where we have good content or bad content. We're just missing so much data. We focused a lot on our values. I think we need to look at hard data as soon as possible, especially now that it's so much cheaper now with data science. Next question. <clears throat> during the last year's, um, during the last year, the affiliations committee has been under-capacitated, under capacity. What would you say as a new trustee to do to improve the capacity situation of the affiliations committee? This is from Kuboff. Independence, a little bit of funding, uh, less reliance on the, the Wikimedia Foundation to operate. This is my answer to, to so many different groups. For as long as the Wikimedia found, uh, uh, as long as there's a volunteer group that depends on the permission of the Wikimedia Foundation to exist and operate, I think that there's a conflict because in various ways, the Wikimedia Foundation is under pressure to accumulate more power and, and take it away from community groups. And if a community group fails or it's under capacity, in different ways, there's a conflict of interest. The, a group being under capacity can mean that's better for the Wikimedia Foundation in different ways or different from for it, a benefit to certain staff people that the group not find its success. And if, if you have a group that's entirely composed of, of volunteers who are supposed to be making decisions, advocating for volunteer and, and user perspectives, they can't be reliant on funding and resources and permission from the Wikimedia Foundation to, to exist. There's just too much conflict there. Independence is, is the way. Next question, would you support allocation of enough resources to the Wikimedia Foundation to make it clear? What are the valid behavioral requirements of very, various movement actors? This is a, a conduct question. There's no central system for reporting conduct issues if someone misbehaves, if someone abuses their, their power in some way. How do you detect that? How do we look at it as data? Are we getting 100, 1,000, 10,000 conduct complaints a year? Who's centralizing these kind of things? What is the nature of the, the conduct complaints? Is it the case that if, if someone abuses their power, it, it doesn't necessarily mean ill intent. It can mean la lack of training. I'm not saying that these are all harassment or, or hostility issues. We, we need leadership development in the, the Wikimedia movement. And sometimes if there's a behavior issue, Tra training, not punishment, is is the way forward. Yes, I. That what I support more than anything else is having a system where people can issue complaints. We look at all the complaints frequently. There, there's thousands of these every year, and we consider them as a data set. And then on the on the on that data set, we strategically plan how to resolve these kinds of problems or address them. Next question: Considering three-year terms on the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. Please name your three biggest accomplishments in the past three years, be it on the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees for the incumbents or just relevant to this position. It's from Igus Melstrom. I, I've been doing Wikipedia for a long time. Wikipedia is personal for me. If you're talking about my biggest accomplishments, they're, they're in my personal network. So I've got friends who support me in, in my wiki editing and I get... I got married in the last year to a partner that I've negotiated how much I'm going to talk about Wikipedia with and what we're going to do in our personal life. But my, my friends and my partner, 
they all know what I do with Wikipedia. I carry my work away from the website in, into my personal life and talk about it in different ways. And talking about accomplishments in the past three, three years, m marriage, it's, it's personal, but that's something very much related to how I express myself in, in Wikipedia. Besides this, I've got my, my wiki colleagues, people who are less personal friends, but I have conversations with on video chat or in social media platforms, text messaging applications about wiki and editing different articles and about social and ethical issues that come up. And then I'm at a university doing Wikipedia research and I talk about all my professional colleagues about Wikipedia. So personal network, wiki friends and professional colleagues, definitely my three, my, my biggest accomplishment in, in the past few years, it's integrating Wikipedia into to different parts of my life and having this network of thousands of people that if I have a question about something wiki related, then I can talk to and I can either make it wiki related or I can just say, hey, what do you feel about artificial intelligence in in society and in the tech sector? A lot of the questions that, that come up on Wikipedia, they're not actually about Wikipedia. They're actually about society or about media, that what, what, whatever's in the news, or it's about people's personal lives. Wikipedia is not an abstract thing. It's It very much affects people's lives. The kind of information that's in Wikipedia determines how people think, how journalists write about things, the the policy that politicians enact. There, there's not a politician in the world that doesn't have an intern that they don't send and tell their intern, go do some research. That intern goes to Wikipedia and whatever Wikipedia says, they tell the politician what Wikipedia says and that, that influences how laws are made and and decisions that get made everywhere. So um, personal networks are, are, are very important. And I would say it's important for anyone on the board of trustees as well. Next question, the Wikimedia Foundation's own annual plan recognizes multiple trends negative to the Wikimedia movement, decreasing visibility, audiences moving to novel competition, including AI solutions and internet influencers. What bold steps do you recommend to the Wikimedia Foundation? more divestment, more community empowerment, more partnerships with universities and public policy institutes. There is no chance of the Wikimedia Foundation, staff or otherwise, finding success without greatly increasing the number of expert partnerships that are available to answer these kinds of big questions. This is not a Wikimedia problem. This is a existential problem to humans. What, what are we going to do now that so much power is accumulating with tech companies that pump out propaganda in different countries for all kinds of reasons, whether elections or, or policy issues or anywhere else. What is Wikipedia's place in this media ecosystem? How do we empower Wikidata and the other Wikimedia projects? Way too big for the Wikimedia Foundation. We need partnerships to sort these things out. It's the end of my questions. If anyone has more questions, you're welcome to contact me. Uh, thanks so much. Lane Raspberry, user Blue Raspberry on Wikimedia projects.